Thanks a lot for the introduction and for the opportunity of presenting my first um, experience with the JSX graph in the special environment I'm working with. So let me share my screen at the beginning. Yes, please. I'm going to upload all the materials that I have developed after the course as well. So you will be able to uh, follow the same steps that I'm going to um, lead you through today. So let me start by um, my background, a short introduction about my background and about my general interests. And afterwards, uh, let's explore together what is, it, what, what is possible uh, to do in this context of JSX graphs with uh, an AI tool like ChatGPT if we don't know very much about holding JSX graphs. Uh, so I am involved in education and research and uh, in both contexts, I'm interested in teaching. I'm teaching uh, primarily mathematics. So that's my background. I'm teaching regular university courses and I'm teaching continuing education courses as well in the domain of mathematics and uh, AI. And I am, uh, in the last years, I have been creating digital teaching materials for own courses and also for the courses uh, of my colleagues. These are typically large courses where uh, interaction, personal interaction is not so easy between a uh, teacher and student. So digital exercises make sense in this context. And uh, another context for which I developed several digital exercises uh, are uh, for the um, university students that are just going to start their studies. So maybe they didn't take yet a decision uh, what to study and uh, we develop materials for easing their decision as well to understand whether, for example, mathematics is proper for them or not. And uh, they can uh, follow some self-study materials and find, find out for themselves if this is a, a good fit for them. And uh, for the ones who have decided to follow one of our courses, one of our study directions, we also want to ease uh, their progress in the first year, which seems to be particularly challenging for them. So we developed also uh, self-learn modules for, for this, this context. And then for all these student data that we are catering uh, by this digital environment, uh, we do also some research, so we we explore this data. We want to understand um, the way students are learning, and uh, we would like to create meaningful categories where uh, that can be described by specific learning behaviors, and accordingly, we can then predict these categories. For example early enough, like in the middle of the semester, and provide some customized um, customized recommendations uh, for our students. So this is the context that I'm coming from and the digital tools that I'm, I'm using uh, are somehow centered around Ilias because that is our teaching platform, which provides a lot of opportunities, but it's in a sense a limitation as well. And so you all might know who, who are working uh, with Ilias. And um, for creating mathematical exercises, I started to use Stack four or five years ago. Uh, but in addition to that, I'm also using Jupyter Notebooks uh, that allow uh, for a lot of interaction. And uh, inside my courses, or also built in, in the Jupyter Notebooks, I am using also GeoGebra applets. <clears throat> and um, yeah, how do I use ChatGPT in different in, in different in other contexts? Yeah, um, than um, for creating JSTX graphs. So I am creating the solution of my exam exercises. For example, you can see um, prompt here um, to obtain the solution for one exercise. Of course, I need to provide in addition uh, the code um, or the text of the exercise in order to, to, to get a meaningful solution for it. And as you might know, the steps um, or the calculations should be sometimes um, updated or corrected if you are working with ChatGPT. Recently, I learned about 
a new version which is more reliable in doing mathematical calculations. So there is math GPT as well, but I'm going to uh, focus today on using chat GPT. I'm also looking for ideas of new exercises, like for example, with this prompt provide some common, oh, sorry, provide some common examples for the proof by cases proof technique, or yeah, I'm using it to answer emails because German is not my mother tongue. And then occasionally I'm correcting the text uh, that I'm uh, drafting in German and optimizing it with ChatGPT. And then I'm creating also code. So when I'm doing data analysis, um, yeah, I'm creating a Python code with ChatGPT as well. And uh, once um, GS6 graphs got available in uh, Stack for Elias, so in the Stack plugin, uh, especially especially developed for for Elias, um, I was very uh, interested in trying them out because similarly to you who might have attended already the workshop of uh, Alfred, I got an introduction into JS6 graphs one or two years ago, and I found them really nice. And I was waiting eagerly to be able to explore and uh, make some showcases for my students as well. And now in the next part of my presentation, I'm going to show you two contexts one of the box plots for which I developed three different um, exercises. So I will start uh, with a static box plot. So meaning that I provide from the very beginning minimal value for my data set, maximal value of the data set, uh, median value and uh, the lower and upper quartile, which are uh, supposed to appear on a typical box plot. And then I'm going to generalize this problem uh, by making it a little bit more interesting. So generating, instead of using these predefined values for minimal, maximal data values, median, and the two quartiles, I'm uh, going to create these variables in the maxima code. And then I'm going to use this as an input for uh, the JS6 graph creating the corresponding box plot. Oh, sorry, here uh, the explanation is missing from the uh, last line. And uh, finally, I'm going to uh, provide a box plot, uh, which is going to appear in the feedback um, of, of um, a stack exercise. And it is relying on the input of the student. So, um, if the student provides a data set as input, in the feedback, they will be able to see uh, how should how, how the corresponding box plot looks like. And then finally, I want to explore something else, which was also shown by Alfred already. Um, oh, sorry, something's got deleted uh, here from this slide of my presentation. So I'm going to showcase on the Apollonio circle, uh, the in interaction with a, a JS6 graph. So here it will be possible to move a certain point on the graph and explore this way, what is the geometrical location of some points which with a predefined um, with a predefined characteristic. And afterwards, I'm going to uh, try to uh, create a problem where the answer should be given also graphically. Yeah, and uh, the graphical answer will be taken over by the uh, stack exercise as well and will be evaluated automatically. So now from the presentation, I'm going to switch to a workshop style rather, and I'm going to open uh, the communication that I had with ChatGPT when I created these exercises. So I, I know quite some programming languages, but I'm not an expert in JS6 graph. And the only background I had in this sense is the introduction given by Alfred. Yeah, one or two years ago, as I mentioned to you before. And now I had the idea to just create a static box plot first. 
And um, that's the prompt that I provided for ChatGPT to provide such a code for me. So just create a GS6 graph for a data set with mini given minimal, maximal value, lower quartile, upper quartile, and uh, median. And this is the code. Yeah, this is quite nice, readable. You see that it starts in the same manner as you have seen in the presentation of Alfred. But as I want this problem um, to appear in a stack exercise, I need to take a look at the stack documentation as well, how to use, how to integrate JS6 graphs into a stack exercise. And I need to change accordingly the introductory part and uh, the final uh, part of the code. So what I prepared for this is the following. Here you see my Ilias environment that I'm using on a daily basis. And I created already the template for the problem, but the code of the JS6 graph is missing. I just um, integrated from the documentation that I mentioned before, this starting part. So this is um, the part where we create just the window, the place for our JS6 graph and this is the initialization of the board, which has a predefined name already here. And these are the dimensions of the bounding box, which appeared also in the context of Alfred. And now, similarly to all HTML syntaxes, if we open a, an environment, we need to close it. So here is the part where I close this environment, which will be recognized as a JS6 graph. And in between, I'm just going to take the answer provided by um, ChatGPT. I just need to take a look at the point from where I'm going to copy all the stuff. So this is the part which the first part happens a little bit differently in HTML. So I'm going to scroll up to the point where uh, this board is initialized um, and I'm going to copy everything which follows afterwards. Oh, sorry. Up to uh, closing the script, yeah? So this is what I'm copying. And now I'm typing it here. Before saving it, I need to make sure that I have removed all comments because the comments are not welcome here. Comments are good for us to understand the code. If we have little or no experience with something like this, so I'm just removing the comments. Okay, that's it. Now let's hope that we removed everything, all the comments, and now let's save it. Sorry, I'm struggling to find the save button. Good, it looks good. Now save also the exercise. And let's try to preview it. Okay, so great, this is what we got. Yeah, just from that one prompt that I showed you, uh, this is the box plot that got created. Yeah, this is not very nice. Of course, I didn't like it. So my first observation is that I don't want to have for the median a whole line, neither for the quartiles, but rather just some segments. And uh, maybe I would like to have a thicker uh, box in the box plot and I don't want to, to have so strongly marked points, yeah? 
see the vertices of this box. I don't really like. And what can I do concerning this? Before starting to modify the code, we can take another look to understand the code. Because in order to now adjust to customize it, if the outcome is not as you wish, you need to be able to, to read the code at least and, and understand it. But ChatGPT can uh, also, um, also give you explanations about the code if you don't understand something. So let us take a look at it. Unfortunately, in the Ilias exercise, um, the code is not so nice anymore. Once we copy it into Ilias, the, the new lines and spaces completely disappear. So that's why I return to ChatGPT. Yeah, so here is just the part part where uh, these fixed values that I mentioned to you that come from my context, predefined context, are um, initialized. So from now on, I can refer to this tree by the name of main v, uh, to this 20 as max value, and these are the quartiles and uh, the median value. Now for the box plot, I need some other con constants. So this is uh, the y position. And um, this is the half width of, of, um, of the box that I am drawing, actually. And of course, you can enter into more details. But at once, you, you can see here that, ah, I see here. So I'm creating the box by drawing this polygon. It's going to be of this color. This is the opacity, and this is the width of the stroke that I'm using to draw it. And probably these are the, the vertices um, given by their two coordinates each. Then we see here that uh, the median line is drawn. And yeah, most probably, how can you draw a line? Well, if you provide two points, then the line is uh, specified by them. So these are the two points. Uh, the x coordinate is given by the median value, and uh, the y coordinate of the two points is, is given yeah, by the uh, y coordinate that we had fixed at the beginning, plus minus the width of the um, box of the rectangle that we would like to see. But of course, this is going to be a line, so it's not going to be a segment. So here I could have written plus minus any value instead of the half width at this point. And then similarly are the other parts now follow of, of this uh, box plot. But each line is just drawn separately. So there is no magical comment like creating a box plot as for example, a circle. Circle is a more common object, so it's nice to, to have an existing comment for that. But here we need to draw really every line one by one. Here we create the whiskers, minimal and maximal whiskers, and then the caps, finally. Okay, and now I'm addressing the issues. Here you see also some explanation for the different parts of the code. I'm going to provide you also, also this. After the workshop, you will have access to the communication that I had with ChatGPT. Then here you see that I don't like the way how the median, median is, is drawn. And then I'm asking for a segment instead of, instead of a line. And yeah, if I would copy now the answer of ChatGPT, I would see no difference in the output. Okay, this happens that you don't get the correct answer. So really nothing happens. I'm uh, not going to do this just to spare some time. But then what do I do? Okay, then I ask ChatGPT again explicitly. Yeah, well, how can I draw instead of a line, a segment? And then I get the correct answer. So now, if I take the code, 
which is provided by ChatGPT and copied in the same environment as I worked in before. This issue will be solved. So now everywhere where segment was used, the line was used beforehand, segment is used newly. I need a moment to get access to the HTML source code of my question. Yeah. And now update the code. Again, of course, I need to get rid of the comments before saving. You could ask ChatGPT to provide you a code without comment as well. That works. Let's save it. And if we manage to remove all comments, it should work. Mm, for some reason, it's working very slowly. See if we get something meaningful. Ah, uh, yeah. So this looks already better. Um, of course, we are not done yet. The optimization can go on. Now, as I told you, I want to remove uh, these points. Please not to uh, see them in 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 uh, such a um, with such a big dimension uh, compared to the to the size of the box. And then I maybe uh, want to make the width of the box plot also larger. Also, the rel relative position of the box can be changed. If the box plot in, in this window can be changed. And these are the steps uh, that I carried out um, subsequently. I'm going to skip these. And now I'm going to show you the other context instead of this. So to get rid of, of um, these orange points, you, you just need to catch the visibility of the points to false, and that will do the magic. And I asked ChatGPT, and ChatGPT told me what to do in this sense. And that was correct. The answer was correct. Now let's go to the next context. So this was actually, these were the first steps of creating the first box plot with no random maxima um, variables integrated into it. Next, I do just a very small step. So for this, you need to check the documentation of the stack exercises. And again, how does the communication between the stack exercise and uh, the integrated JSX graph work? And then we are going to figure out how can you refer in the JSX graph code uh, to already existing maxima uh, variables? And here I prepared the code just to, be, to make it easier to show. I just put it in a Word document. It's not as nice as in Visual Studio 
study approach as you have seen before, but it's at least readable. readable. So, um, to achieve this next step, taking over some values from the Maxima environment, we just need to carry out these modifications. So beforehand, in the previous document, here you, you have seen uh, static values, fixed values. And now, this what you see here is just to the reference of the corresponding variables uh, that I in the Maxima environment. And I generated them uh, randomly, say, students working with this problem uh, will not see the very same uh, box plot, all of them. But the minimal uh, data value, maximal value, lower quartile and uh, upper quartile and median will be different. Afterwards, I third exercise. So, um, oh, and I was already here. Okay. Now, if I would like to interact uh, with the input of the student, if I'm asking, I'm providing at the beginning of a, a, a box plot, and that I'm asked to provide me a data set of a specific length that is belonging to the given box plot. And if it doesn't provide the fit, then in the feedback, I am showing a box plot which describes which belongs to the data. And then they will see the difference. And maybe it's easier for them to adjust the data set uh, that they provide as an input. And um, so for creating this box plot, which is based on student input, I uh, use this code. So the communication between Maxima code is happening here. Here uh, you see two new things. So answer one is the typical variable name that we use for the inputs in a stack exercise. And you see that I can refer to the inputs uh, from a stack exercise here as well. But in addition, I need a Maxima function that I um, created beforehand, I implemented, and this Maxima uh, function is able to provide for a given data set um, the specified quartile. The zeroth quartile is just the minimum value. The fourth quartile uh, has to be understood as the maximal value of the data set. The first and third quartiles are interpreted as lower and upper quartiles and the second quartile will just provide the median for any given data set, yeah? And yeah, this is the connection now in between Maxima and um, the JSX graph. And finally, I'm going to show you the other exercise, but maybe there you need to explore the code for yourself. I'm going to show just the outcome. So the question is, if we have two points, A and B, here A is placed into the origin and B, B it's on the x-axis uh, having the x uh, coordinate one. And then the question is, what are, is the geometrical place of all those points denoted by P, which have this property that PA divided by PB, where uh, both uh, denote the lengths of the corresponding segments is equal to one over two. Yeah, if this would be one, PA would be exactly equal to PB. That would be just a line, yeah, going through the midpoint of this segment between A and B. But now, if we take another uh, option here, another um, value, then what would be the place of such points? And you can find the answer graphically here by moving 
this point on the x-axis and then checking out of point a of point p respectively the point below for which i didn't give a name um, the green points are the ones that have um, the requested property and now if i'm moving my point on the x-axis you see you get an intuition about the position of p satisfying the property and then you would guess that yeah this is or an ellipse that we obtain at a geometrical place. And then here you can also answer the corresponding question. I put a circle and then in order to help students go one far, a step further, I also ask, um, please place um, this point on the x-axis to that position where the point P has the highest Y coordinate. Yeah, and by doing this, I really hope that students will get an idea about how they can guess the coordinates of the um, a center of the circle. Yeah, and then uh, for the code, you, you will be able to explore the uploaded material. And if we have time, then um, for one or two questions, I'm still here. Thanks a lot.